Some conservatives are targeting divorce as the next avenue to curtail women's freedoms. Let me explain. The U.S. uses a no-fault divorce system, meaning that you don't have to prove to a judge that you deserve a divorce. So like Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas can divorce for irreconcilable differences. Our legal system assumes that it's not a good idea to force people to stay in marriages that they're unhappy in. Our legal system also assumed people would be responsible with no-fault divorce, but they aren't. But it wasn't always that way. Once upon a time, you would have to prove to a presumably male judge that you deserve to get a divorce. And this was particularly harmful for women who initiate nearly 70% of divorces. And why do women initiate 70% of divorces? Because they feel unsatisfied, not because their husbands are harming them like she's claiming. All right, so some conservatives, like Texas Republicans, are trying to scale back that no-fault divorce system because they're saying accessible divorce is just ruining the institution of marriage. We've got all of these people just getting divorces over small irritants that they should just work out. Everything was fine except... Except? Yeah, he was too nice. <laughs> I had this friend some years back. She was my best friend in the whole wide world. We mm. hung out constantly. I enjoyed her company. Highly intelligent woman, um, quite attractive, married. Husband is very attractive, very successful. Not only did he provide for his family, she didn't work, but he cooked, he cleaned, took care of the kids. He was emotionally open and available Every time I'd come over and hang out with both of them, you know, he was so talkative and emotive and empathetic. I, I thought, wow, they're the perfect couple in my opinion. Um, two beautiful teenage children, perfect life. Right. I used to drop things off at her house. She would tell me, oh, can you drop this off? And I would go over and he would be in the house cleaning. I mean, Ajax and Pine Sol and Windex mm -hmm. and Mops out. And he would ask me, you know, Demi, how does everything look? Do you, do you think she'll be happy? Um, is this up to a woman's standards? Cleanliness, you know, he said, I just love her so much. And I, I would say, wow, you know, you're, you're really incredible. Um, of course she's gonna be happy. You know, you did an amazing job. You always do an amazing job. The relationship with my friend, something started changing in her. You know, she started talking to me about depression and she's overweight and she didn't like it. And it never bothered her husband. I mean, he adored her no matter what, but she started complaining about her weight and this depression and saying that she needs to go to therapy, which she did. She found a therapist and started going. But after she started going to therapy, I noticed there was a, a dramatic change in her. Mm. Um, she started complaining after these sessions, she would begin complaining more and more about her husband and how he's making her miserable. And, and I would say to her, what do you mean? This is all of a sudden new for you since you started seeing this new therapist. So I started inquiring about the therapist, you know, what are her beliefs? Um, and she said, oh, she's very feminine. I knew I deserved better. I knew that I gave him so many chances, more chances than what he needed. My way back to the, to the hotel room and long and behold, there was this fine, beautiful, black man <laughs> there was this fine and beautiful black man i swear i thought like god himself has sent me this god oh my god he's tall fine beautiful beautiful teeth smell good like i was like sitting in the back of him i can just smell like the cologne like just coming my way anyways um so i started talking to this guy and he had some nice conversation in, in the first, you know, couple of minutes. I'm smelling his cologne. It was some good, very good conversation. And so at that moment, I decided, you know what? You are overdue on intimacy, love, and everything else. Because at this point, um, I was done with my husband. Didn't care what the f thought about me. Didn't give zero whatsoever. And so, you know what? I hung out with this tall, beautiful, black man, and I had the best time of my life. I deserved it all, and that's when I cheated on my narcissistic husband. The issue 
is a man can do everything right, but if the wife wants a divorce, for whatever reason, he is going to be the one held responsible for it. Even though he did nothing wrong, he's going to be the one paying up. One senator even suggested that people should just stay in unhappy marriages, even violent ones, for the sake of children. If you're going to blatantly lie about what the article says, don't show it right behind you. He never said that, and the article clearly states seemed to suggest. Also claim that accessible divorce is actually bad for women because it makes men more likely to cheat on us. If you listen closer, their real problem is women having agency and having power and being able to make decisions without a man's permission. If you stop trying to be a victim, you would realize the real issue is women being rewarded financially for breaking their marriage vows at the cost of the husband who didn't do anything wrong. Okay, and one other thing. Let's talk about the fact that there are a record amount of single men right now and women still initiate 70% of divorces, which really isn't that surprising because men are far more likely to cheat, far more likely to physically and sexually abuse their partner, and they are far less likely to do domestic and emotional labor even when the woman is the breadwinner. Lesbian relationships have the highest divorce and domestic abuse rate. Regardless, men and women cheat around the same rate. Men are not far more likely to physically abuse their partners. And while men might not clean the house as often, they do other things like cutting the grass, fixing the house, the cars, and taking out the trash. Okay, so let's just put all the pieces together here. We've got a record amount of single men because women are like, I don't really need this. And at the same time, predominantly male legislators are trying to reinstate laws that have historically been used to trap women in marriages. They're eroding reproductive rights and trying to create obstacles to obtaining a divorce. There's a record amount of single men because they don't want anything to do with you. There is a reason men are going out of America to find women, but no man is coming to America to find women. All right, ladies, if you're a stay-at-home mom and your backup plan in case of divorce is your ex-husband is going to pay alimony and child support, listen up. When I filed for divorce for my ex-husband, he was making over $200,000 a year. I kicked him out in October of 2018. He paid me nothing. This is what they are truly upset about. Laws making it harder for them to use divorce as a retirement plan. The day after Jake's wages got garnished for that $3,600, he began telling people inside of the company, there's about 300 employees, that he was going to get fired. If you quit your job, that's different mm -hmm. than if you get fired. So two days after the only time that Jake's wages were ever garnished, he went into work that day, got into a huge fight with the main owner of our family business, who's a family member, right in front of all of the employees, told him to f off, called him a f I have this in affidavits, got all crazy. He was like pushing chairs around and stuff. So that family member had to fire him, he didn't have a job. And when we were in court last week, he submitted papers saying that he earns between fourteen and $1,700 a month as a grown man with no disabilities, with a career history of six figures. If you enjoyed this video, I promise you'll enjoy this next video. I will see you there.